Welcome to Constructing 5, where I show you how to make a full game in just under 5 minutes. So let's start a new project, let's call it Ice, and we're going to create one of these ice sliding puzzles that we see in many, many games. So I'm going to start by zooming out a little bit so I can see the viewport. Then I'm going to start creating my objects. I'm going to start with my background first, so I'm going to insert a new object. I'm going to use what's called a tile background. This means when the image is completely full, it will just repeat that image again and again. It's really good if you don't want blurry backgrounds. So I'm going to import one that I've found already. Hit X and then I'm just going to make this cover my viewport for now. And then stretch it out like so. Good. Now next thing I need is I need a sprite for both my player and for a block or something that's going to stop my player from moving. Okay, so now before we continue, it's really important that when you are dealing with a block that's going to stop the player, that has to have a square collision. Anything rounded can actually mess with this quite a little bit. And then for your player as well, I actually recommend making their hitbox a little bit square as well. So just be careful with how the collision works with your player because we can get some really weird stuff happen. So I'm actually just going to square this player off really, really quickly and give him a bit more of a square one. So I don't want him randomly stopping on his shoulders. So if you're making your game, you might want to make it so when you step on ice, it changes to a different animation that's just got a slightly different hitbox. So that'll do for now. That should work. So now that's set up in terms of our behaviors, let's add them now. So we're going to add two to our player. First thing we're going to add two is scroll to. This is just so the camera follows our player as he moves around. And the second one, which is a bit more important, is the eight directions. For our ice block, we just need the solid object. And you can have any object stop the player as long as it's got the solid objects attached to it. In terms of our properties, we just need to make sure that the directions are set to four directions only, so they can't move on the diagonal because that would break a lot of the puzzles. So now we've got that set up, what we can do is we can start building a level. Now to make level design a bit easier, we can use the snap to grid property we can set up a grid. This will help us design our level a little bit easier. I'm going to quickly design a very quick level for you. Okay, so I've got a level design here. This is probably the longest part of making this yourself, is designing the levels. There's loads of great examples online of other puzzles people have made that you can use to start you off with. Now let's get into the coding aspect, which is actually really, really short today. We can actually get away with only using two events. So in our event sheet, we actually only need two events for this. So let's add an event. So first we need to check if the player is on ice. So we check this by seeing if they're overlapping another object, and that's going to be the ice. And we need another condition with this, and we need to say, is the player moving? If so, what do we want to do? We want to make sure the player can no longer change their direction they're going in. So we're going to set default controls to off. And we're also going to make it so they've got a fixed speed. So we're going to set speed always to 500. If you want them to move faster, we can up this number. If you want them to move slower on the ice, we can lower that number. We're then going to take these two conditions that we've got. So we can hold shift, control C, and then control V to copy that underneath. So let's copy that we can get rid of these two here so before we add our actions we need to, need to invert both of these so we're checking if they're not on the ice and they're not moving and most importantly we need to click on this side bit and make this an or block which means the moment they step off the ice whether that's because they've beat the level or they've gone back to the start or the moment they stop moving because they've hit a wall they're able to move again i'm going to add an action i'm going to do player set default controls to true so now we should be ready to test so let's hit play so i'm going to move i'm going to slide on the ice i cannot change my momentum or direction at all i'm trying okay so hopefully you can hear me spamming the keys to try and change that but the moment i stop i'm able to move again 
and with that I'm able to get to the end and beat the level and then I can carry on moving as normal. Now if your speed is really really high there's a chance that you can bounce off the wall and that means that you won't stop straight away. If that's the case all we do is add one more line of code and we say player on collision with another object and that's going to be our ice block then player dot stop and that will fix your player bouncing off and then sliding slowly backwards. So play around with the player's properties so they move a bit faster or a bit slower on the ice and make your own ice puzzles.